Captain America, Steve Jobs. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome CEO Mark Temple. any of those uh, videos. I'm not Superman, I'm not Spider-Man, I'm not the Silver Surfer, I'm not Steve Jobs, I'm just Mark Templeton, okay? Whoa. And um, Mark Templeton has been here <laughs> working with you and for you uh, about opportunity, leading to opportunity. And I think leading to opportunity is the primary obligation that Citrix has to you as a partner. Yes, we have to do all the things that Al Carlos and Tom talked about, but leading to where the puck is going to be, okay, where the opportunity is going, is our number one obligation to you, especially in a fast-moving industry and where things are changing faster than ever. I think, by the way, when you look at uh, since 1993, which is the year that the first customer actually paid for a Citrix product, I think they were stealing it before then. Okay. Um, through uh, 2011, we have created a tremendous amount of opportunity together because this has been a journey together, and we're you know on this trajectory, having you know a great first half, and as everyone is seeing in, in this very difficult world, fighting the headwinds, fighting the good fight, but we're in some great great product segments and categories that are really about taking customers into the future. And this beautiful picture here could not be possible without you. And, you know, so I like to think, you know, that we are, yes, a family, we're a business family, which works together for a common set of goals, outcomes, and to the benefit of customers. So from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you. Thank you very, very much. thankful is an uh, important thing. You know, focusing on the things that you can be thankful for, the things that you have, I think is part of what makes us a special company and culture, and it's also part of being humble. Uh, this summer I went on vacation uh, down the Amalfi Coast, and man, did I get reminded of this whole idea of being thankful for what you have and being humble. Okay. Let me show you this. We were on this little boat cruise, like a little day boat, uh, in the Tyrrhenian Sea. And we look at my sons, my daughter, my wife over there, and say, look, look out there, look at this thing. What is it? And so we got closer and closer to it and it reminded me of something. <laughs> That's not a moon. It's a space station. Yeah, it wasn't a boat. It wasn't a space station. It was bigger than that, okay? So this was a Philippe Stark yacht, designed yacht, and just an amazing piece of architecture. And uh, we got a chance to get close to it and get some incredible photos. We got back to our hotel, and we couldn't resist. We had to do the research, okay? So here you go. I got some numbers for you, all right? You ready for this? Uh, I'm going to let you guess some of them. The first one is, how long is it? All right, everyone wants to know. 394 feet. Okay? Second, how much did it cost to build? $300 million. Okay? 24. What do you think that is? Crew? No. The crew is 57. 24,000 square feet of living space. <laughs> 24,000 square feet of living space. All right, the next 24, come on. This is dear and dear to my heart. 24,000 horsepower, okay, <laughs> to run it at 35 knots, okay. Now, this next one is really hard. You won't get it, guess it, 44. Windows, no. The, close. The thickness of the glass to make it bulletproof. Okay. 
Now, you'll get it when I explain the last number. It's really depressing. The age of the owner. <laughs> 38 years old. So, 38 years old, you know, I think uh, you probably need bulletproof uh, something, you know, to be safe because uh, what's inside this thing is pretty magical from what we can tell. So, <clears throat> we were actually going to lunch the next day when we were in a, a, a taxi, and this thing pulled into Positano Harbor. Now look at this. There it is. You see this right over here? That's a ferry. <laughs> That's the ferry carrying hundreds of people, okay, to the island of Capri, all right? So, and, you know, not long before this, this harbor was full of, like, 100, 150, 200-foot yachts. I mean, amazing spectacle, right? They were there, all right? So, you know, I looked at my children, and I said, this is an important lesson, a really important lesson. And it goes something like this. No matter how big yours is, someone has a bigger one. <laughs> now, so why is that important? Okay. It's important because keeping your feet on the ground and having that perspective is so, so important period, in any kind of environment, economic, social, whatever, but it's more important than ever today, okay? And this is about being thankful for what you have, you know, admire others, all right, and then go on and seek the future, and that's what we're doing. We are, as a company, going to continue to lead to the opportunity. And that's by seeing the future, having an opinion about it that we really believe in, and then pursuing it courageously. That's what got us here, and that's, when it get, that's what's going to get us to the next huge milestone that we're charging for. And as Al showed you, we've, we've built some amazing <coughs> products, technologies, and market positions in what I think are the most relevant <coughs> markets today and into the future that exist. Markets that allow people to collaborate across devices and time in a seamless kind of way, to share documents and information and intelligence and knowledge and create it. The ability to get to the kinds of desktops and apps that are needed to get things done and to do that all on a networking and cloud infrastructure that's modern, that's Amazon style, and can scale into infinity. So this is where we are today. And by the way, in each one of these, we have a number one or a number two market position, or we're a challenger for that when you look at our roadmap, our growth rates, and how we're doing competitively in those markets. And this is the opportunity we have to be where customers want to be. This is where they want to be. They are seeing pressure on mobility. It's an imperative. It's not an option anymore. They're moving and needing to really evolve the enterprise data center to being a cloud, and a real kind of cloud, okay? It, I, I think of it as the post-server virtualization era. Okay? That's what they're looking for. And third, this massive build-out going on around the world, right, around cloud services, whether it's a carrier or a telco or other kind of self-described service provider or a hot new startup that's building a new kind of capability as a cloud service. This is where the opportunity is because that's where customers are. And where customers are is where we want to be. Now, 
The truth is, we talked about this last year, is that it's a crazy world. It's a, a world described back in 1999 by some planners as VUCA, all right? Volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. And I've taken the uh, poetic license to modify it, all right? I added another U because I think it's actually unusually uncertain. <laughs> unusually uncertain. And I don't think it's going to get back to the way it was. And so, from my point of view, and I think Citrix's point of view, you have to take this as you find it and embrace it and give customers the solutions they need for a VUCA world. Now, in June, as is reasonably customary for me, I uh, spend about three weeks in EMEA traveling. So here's my, uh, my flight track travel log here. So I uh, had, had uh, quite a good trip this year, really, really good trip this year. And uh, thanks to you, many of you were you know, uh, hosts and, and spent time with me and the Citrix team. Everyone is always so hospitable and make sure that I learn the things that I need to learn to make sure we are leading to opportunity. So I have another set of numbers for you here, okay? Here they are. All right, 15, what do you think? Miles, right, 15,000 miles, all right. 150. Okay, the number of partners that I talk to either as small teams or medium-sized teams over the three weeks. Seven, okay, the number of all hands meetings I had around EMEA as I went to you know, see the Citrix team. All right, 18. Here's a little. Here's a little clip. Here's a little clue. Spent three nights in Munich. <laughs> Beers. Nah, okay. I, I, I'm not a big beer. I'm not big on beer. Right. You know what I love? Nuremberger sausages with crowd. Okay. So. I was there three nights, I had exactly the same dinner three nights in a row, okay? So 18 Nuremberger sausages, okay? I like them a little bit more on the well-done side, by the way. Okay, 500. Customers, you know, customers I talk to, again, from smaller groups to larger groups. And 15 is the number of CIO one-on-ones I had over the course of the three weeks. So a really rich experience over three weeks, and there were a few takeaways, all right? Number one, I was, uh, I won't tell you the country, all right? But uh, a huge customer, I mean, this will be a Fortune 10 company in the world, okay? Uh, CIO told me, we love Citrix, and we buy multiples of your products, but for some reason, okay, I think we bought a Ferrari, but I think we're only using second gear, okay? Uh, you know, uh, he, and they explained this to me. So think about this, because guess what? That's what opportunity looks like. When a customer thinks they bought a Ferrari and stuck in second gear, you know, our job and our opportunity is to get them out of second gear. Show them how to use third, show them how to use fourth, you know, and whatever number of gears, uh, you know, uh, I guess Ferraris can have up to eight speeds these days. <laughs> um, then a theme that was throughout the entire trip was, yes, costs, everyone's feeling the weight of costs, all right? But a lot of assertions were around, gee, have we wrung out all the costs, all right? Have we really wrung out the costs in terms of the way we built computing in the PC era? And the answer is no, but you're working on the last three to five percent, which is the hardest part to work on, most expensive, right? Takes the longest time. And the only way to change that is to shift, you know, into the future with a whole different approach. And, uh, so, speed, agility, one customer gave you this incredibly beautiful gift, and I'm going to share it with you now, all right? They said, yeah, we call this around here spagility, because <laughs> we like to keep things simple. And it's one word that means 
speed and agility, which is what they are looking for from us. To me, that's opportunity. When a customer says that, that says there's opportunity there. So, as I reflected on, on the, uh, all these meetings and all these conversations, here's what I thought. First, I think that the understanding of Citrix in this post-presentation server era as a part, a strategic part that goes way beyond Windows virtualization is, the, the understanding of that is profoundly improved in one year, okay? We talked about this last year, and a lot of the asks that we've made that, you know, of you to learn, tell, and be proud of the story, you know, you've taken the customers. That was my experience, all right? Secondly, and it maps to that Ferrari second tier point. It's like, I heard customers say, look, we want more direct touch from you, Citrix, and we want more capabilities from partners, okay, across the products, right, to bring them together more in the way you talk about, which is this blueprint of mobile and cloud that Al showed. We want that blueprint. We want partners that are able to bring us services that allow us to make that blueprint a reality, okay? So the relevance of this mobile and cloud blueprint, I, I just you know, sort of flew out of here literally and figuratively on that alone. Fourth, uh, great demand is you know, some of these more in-depth customers meet, customer meetings, tons of whiteboards around cloud gateway, tons of whiteboards around Netscale, and tons of whiteboards around the future where we're going with desktop virtualization, and that is to Windows as a Service, and that's Project Avalon we'll talk more about uh, on Wednesday. So, tremendous demand for these products. And, finally, I took away a confirmation that we're doing the right things. We're pushing forward into solutions over products, incorporating products as a core direction of Citrix, breaking through that ceiling because tech companies go through these set cycles. You, you start out, you know, enamored with technology, and then you maybe you get to the first stage and you're able to create a product out of it and tell a product story, and then maybe you're able to sell tell a second product story and a third product story. But the huge breakthrough that we're you know, working on, and by the way, it'll take us about three years, I think, my estimate, all right, to break through together with a product, a solution over product mindset and focus and understanding. That's, that's where we're going, all right, again, together. So, you know, we're, we're doing this in a step-by-step -step, uh, basis and as quickly as we know how. So the first step is actually to expand the opportunity, expand the definition, and make sure that we get a straight and fast and direct insertion into a new market, okay? And Al talked about it, Tom talked about it a little bit, and that's enterprise mobility. But today, when we talk about enterprise mobility with customers, you know what they think? Oh, you've got a Windows desktop on an iPad or an iPhone, or that, that's, that's kind of how they think. And unfortunately, I think many of us think that as well. So we're gonna do everything we know to change that, all right? And the first thing is we're gonna do this. So instead of thinking about desktops and apps, we're gonna think about Windows, moving it from the traditional method of delivery to Windows as a true cloud service, that's the future. And then we're going to separate out all right, everything we're doing about enterprise mobility so we can get a keen and core focus on this marketplace because it's huge. It's huge and it's what customers want to talk about. So this total available market opportunity, and this is, these are 2015 estimates based upon our data and uh, IDC and so forth and massaging all of it. This is the total available market that we have ahead of us. And this is what we're going to be talking about at Synergy. 
Synergy is another form of creating opportunity, working together to bring customers here for, yes, the, uh, the keynote and all those things, the breakouts, the learning, the networking, the fun, and the relationships. And so Synergy will be all about mobile work styles and cloud services and, and how we are a company that's focused on delivering an end-to-end -end system that allows people to work anywhere and allows IT services to be made anywhere. So we'll have a big, in the keynote, a big focus on, on mobile work styles, which I want to talk a little bit more about. And we're talking about mobile work styles as a solution, okay? And a solution, you know, is a word that gets batted around and used in, you know, people call technology solutions, product solutions. But in my mind, a solution has to map, has to be a description of what people want to do, okay? That's what a solution is what people want to do and how they say that. And when you speak in this way, it's actually very different, which is what makes it very hard, right? Because we're, we're, you, we're mostly accustomed to speaking product and technology as opposed to customer challenges, business challenges, and solutions to those challenges. It's sort of, we've got to reverse the field. Now, a few years, uh, maybe last year, we um, had to, at Summit, we talked uh, about starting with why. How many of you remember this TED Talk we showed with uh, Simon Sinek? Okay, all right. So, I would encourage you to go watch it again and again and again. Because Simon Sinek, you know, has really captured a profound idea here. And he invented this thing called the Golden Circle Principle. And you can see it here on his whiteboard here. What, how, and why. And basically, his argument is, which is exactly right, that most people know exactly what they do, they know how they do it, but they're not sure why. Uh, but the most powerful brands and companies and sales teams, etc., they know why they do it, and they start there, which then leads them to the how. And then the what is like, well, easy. Okay? And the takeaway from Simon is, customers don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Go watch the TED Talk again. It's worth, if you've seen it, watch it again. It really is a well-spent 18 minutes. So, starting with why, I think is an important thing for us to all learn, because that's how we learn to sell solutions. So, we're, but this is not the language we use today, because we're just like most companies, where we've trained and, and grown up around what? All right, and here's, with mobility, here's what it sounds like. Um, we want to talk with you about enterprise mobility management. Uh, we have a powerful, best of breed, and market leading product, okay? And in it, you're going to love it, because it has everything you need for mobile business, including mobile apps and a store. Want to buy one? Now, let's reverse it. If we reverse it, it goes something like this. By the way, you know you're starting with Y. Think about W, Y, and think of we believe, okay? We believe. We believe people should be able to work and play from anywhere and have a rich, mobile work style that allows them to do what they want to do when they want to do it. We have incredibly beautifully designed products that deliver an incredible integrated experience that incorporates all the mobile apps in the world through your own enterprise app store. And this is packaged in a breakthrough mobile work style solution for enterprise mobility management. Okay? So, it starts with your belief and the why, and then it builds from there. Now, this has been done probably best in the world by what company? Who? Apple. Now, I'm going to tell you a little known fact about me. OK? 
okay? That I got my start in technology, all right, not in software, okay, but as a Apple dealer, a reseller, okay? And uh, in those days, it was uh, 1984 and 85, um, and the solution that customers wanted to talk about, they wanted to create beautifully designed documents just like professionals did, and so we sold desktop publishing solutions, okay? And a solution is this combination of products, in this case hardware, software, and services to solve the problem, okay? And enable customers to create these beautifully designed documents. And so it had these pieces, all right? It was a Macintosh, it was Mac Draw, Mac Write, Mac Paint. Um, by the way, as a, as a dealer, as a reseller, we chose things like uh, uh, Microsoft Word, PageMaker, Quark. So we got a chance to, you know, modify it a little bit and add value to it, all right? Then there was the HD20. That's not really pointing because it's underneath the Mac. But, you know, it was a SCSI hard disk. Right? It was fast enough to store all the graphics and all the big files that desktop publishing created. You needed a network, all right? the Apple Talk network, all right? to share the disks and files and the last piece, and that's the laser print, the laser writer. Okay? Uh, we sold these, they were $7,000 list price, and we didn't discount. All right? uh, we didn't have to because we were selling a desktop publishing solution. So this solution had these pieces. It had a device, it had apps, it had a place to store data, it had a network, and it had the services of a high-resolution printer. See where this is going? Okay. So what if we had a solution for mobile work styles all right, that had a virtual device known as Siva? Uh, could distribute, get access to, you know, mobile apps of any type and mobilize any type of app in the world? What if it had data sharing as part of it? What if it had a delivery network that was high performance, secure, powerful? And what if it had a storefront service? Okay, well guess what? We have that. We have that. And this is it, okay? Because the solution here is to answer this need. People want to get work done anytime, anywhere, on any device. And so when you pull all of our incredible app tech, uh, capability together, whether it's, oh, by the way, Windows, okay, desktops and apps, our own mobile work style apps, Podio, GoToMeeting, and ShareFi, right? and Receiver and Cloud Gateway, you get a full solution. Okay? You get a full solution for mobile work styles because it also supports third-party apps. Okay? So let me give you a quick peek at this. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to have Brad Peterson come out and show us. Brad. <laughs> You can see the pictures, but you got to see it live. So we're going to do that. And to start off with that, we will start with mobile device, right? Mobility is what it's all about. So the device we'll start with, of course, is the iPad. Okay? Now we have a few more devices in here, as you might imagine. So let's so go ahead. So-called eye jacket, right? That's right. That's right. I think we were watching the tweets back there. I think there's a few folks here that have heard the legend. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this up on the screen so you can see what we're doing. Okay? So we'll go through uh, Apple AirPlay again. Pop into here and mirror the screen so you can see it. Okay, now if you take a look at this screen, this is a typical iPad and it's a BYO. So you went into the store and you bought it and it's yours. And these applications on the screen are yours. Now in the far right hand corner in the bottom is receiver though. So that, you click into the app store and you pull it down and that's for work. You connect into work. And it's very easy. When you pull it in, you put your email address in there. It connects into the cloud gateway. 
and then it brings all your applications to you. You know, historically, you would go on, on a PC and you'd have all these processes running down in the taskbar for different functions, and you'd have to know where to point them and where do you upgrade them, and it's been complex. It's much simpler now. Receiver is the only thing on your side. Ax or gateway, cloud gateway is really the only thing on the other side that this person connects to and has to even know about. Everything else is behind it. All the Windows apps, all the desktops, all the uh, web and SaaS apps. Wait a minute, Brian. I thought Receiver just did Windows stuff. No. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought, I thought no, it was no. more, you know, Zen app, Zen desktop. So, beyond, on beyond. And with Cloud Gateway, that's how you get there. So, tell you what, let's take a look at that. It's this easy. Receiver is here and it's configured. When I click on it, it opens up. So now look at all the icons that you can see in the screen here. These icons represent applications when I click on them, they'll run in some form. Some are Windows apps, some are desktops, some are mobile apps, there's data in here, web and SaaS. Now these started off in here because the IT organization <laughs> chose when I put receiver on here to provision those automatically. But do you see this plus sign on the left? If I click on that, I can go in to this scrollable menu full of uh, choices here and other applications and I can go and pick, you know, people, uh, people click and SAP, and those will jump into the menu also. Now these are available to me also, okay? Now, many different kinds of apps. The first one we're gonna look at is the Excel spreadsheet in the upper left-hand corner, traditional Zen app. If I click on that, it sends a command into the data center, right? Fires it off in there, it's running in there. Sending its pixels all the way to me here on this wireless device, mobily, wherever I am in the world. Of course, I'm gonna pop into here and grab the file to make it a little bit more interesting. And I can even go into here and, you know, pull a keyboard down and make some uh, modifications to the sales numbers. It's that easy. Look at that. 74% other. Okay? So that's pretty easy. Now, application not running here, of course. It's Windows. It's in the data center. It's virtualized. It's painting here. I can hold that. Okay? I got another device. So this device here is a Samsung. 7.7 .7 inch. And it's an Android device, of course. Right? So it also is running... Receiver. So let's get a shot of this. I think we can hit it right about there. Yeah, this, that's nice, right? So it's got receiver. It's got access to all the same apps, data, web, SaaS, mobile. I'm going to go ahead and click on that same spreadsheet that you see up in the corner up there. And it's going to connect into Zen app just like before. It's going to take the spreadsheet off there. Turn it again. It's gone. It's over here. Right? So that's a smooth roaming. Now we can take it with us and go mobile. Okay? So that certainly can continue on for some time because I have uh, just another device here. This is the Samsung Galaxy Note. So this is 7.7, .7, this is 5.3 inch. And this, of course, is a phone. So it's a phone, sorry, cameraman. And it is a, uh, an application source running Android. And in this, same applications are made available. If I click on the spreadsheet, it takes it out of my pocket here and puts it over here. So now we have it here, okay? Right on the Android device. All of these functions capable on the BYO, because who knows what's coming into your organization? Like possibly something like this. <laughs> now this is quite wonderful because this is the iPhone 5. Let's see it, how many, how many folks here do iPhone 5? 27.3. Okay, well yeah, they're hard to get. And you either had to order ahead of time in that 20 minute window before they were sold out, or you had to go to the store the night before, as I did and camped out, and uh, then got in line first thing in the morning. With this, do the same. Go into Receiver, click on the Excel spreadsheet. Not only is it going to smooth run out of this pocket over into here, but it has access to all the other applications too. So there it is. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other capabilities. Yes? Okay. So you just told us what most people already think. What do they think? That Citrix thinks mobile is about virtual windows, apps, and desktops on interesting mobile devices, all right? So you got, you got, you got to do better here, Brad. <laughs> doesn't stop, the fun doesn't stop. Let's there. go. All right, let's, let's take this. Go. Let's have some more fun here, all right? So okay. we're going to go back to the iPad screen. And we're going beyond the Windows world, okay, right? So let's take a look at this. Let me make sure we're, we're uh, yeah, we are. We're good, good, good. And we're going to go in the top, the lower right-hand corner down to this little world, and that says Worldwide Co. That's the fake company we were dealing here, the uh, internet site. When I click on that, it opens a browser inside receiver, creates a secure micro VPN tunnel, no matter where you are, back into the organization, and opens up your intranet. So you can access this, click on links, and follow that around within the company. So that allows that safely within receiver here. So that's an example of web applications and hitting those. 
So now we have SaaS applications, software as a service. And there's many of those, but the example that I'll use here will be salesforce.com. A lot of organizations use that. So when I click on that icon, it sends a command through the Cloud Gateway. The Cloud Gateway knows I'm a part of the company because I have my credentials, right? my domain credentials. It has my credentials for Salesforce. It logs me into Salesforce and hands my page back to me. Right? So it's a single sign-on in the network, in Cloud Gateway. That means I don't even know my username and password. So if I ever leave the company, well, the company turns off my Active Directory account and I no longer have access. I never knew it, right? But while I'm at work, it works great. And when I'm traveling on the road, it works wonderfully. When I'm at home, it works just as brilliantly because it's all traveling through Cloud Gateway. Single sign-on in the network, not on the device where you want it, okay? That's Web and SaaS. Very good? Okay, let's close that down. Now, we go beyond that, we want to talk about mobile devices, okay? Native mobile devices like this and the Androids. So now we can take applications that are native, execute on the device, we can package those securely and deliver them to the device where they run right there and then secure them there. <coughs> if I go into the little plus sign menu here, we're going to go into this particular folder here called mobile apps. In the mobile app space, this is a list of in this case, iOS native mobile apps. And if I click on pharmaceutical in this case, it's going to grab it over, OK, to download, transfers it through the cloud gateway right here. Once it lands here, it's going to want to install it. Now. So I'm going to say OK. And so it does. Bam. So it's installed. Now look at this page. This page is all my personal applications. And then this page is all of my receiver delivered native applications. Now when I click on pharmaceutical, it's going to say, listen, I'll run this, but it has to be authorized by receiver. So now I know to secure it by receiver. Okay, if I no longer have an account with the company, I can no longer run these. So here it is. It's a molecular application here. I can rotate and do what I want. And I can also disconnect from the network and take this offline, which you certainly couldn't do if it's a Windows Zen app, app. So now you're native, offline, tons of advantage. One other example in that space as I go back into receiver, is uh, the mobile mail, you see third down. If I click on mobile mail and bring it down, the mobile mail app does the same. It copies it down and it's gonna install it here. Now, what's interesting here is this. Everyone that gets their iPhones and their iPads and their Androids, they all have mail, mail ability kicked baked in and you have to connect that into your company and then all of your secure and interesting mail goes right on the device, right next to your personal mail and all your other mail that you have configured in there. So this allows you to separate it. Your personal mail is in the BYO device where it should be, but your business mail is pulled over and put in the mobile mail application that Citrix provides in a secure form. Install. So there you can see, it's installing on the device. And click. Now first time use, authorize, right? The receiver says yes, it's time to play. And it's going to come up like this and you configure it. So you just start configuring it as you normally would. You put in your uh, address, so your email address, and then your username, and all this stuff's pretty simple. And then you guys can help me with this, right? My super secret Citrix password, you got it? And save. That's it. Now, authenticating. So it's tying back in, downloading the folders, pulling it all back. Again, into this single mail application that's native and running here, but in a secure sandbox. If I go into contacts, these are all my business contacts in here now, not mixed up in my personal space. Calendar's in there also, if we go into the inbox, I got a great email from Mark here, and it's got this really cool diagram of the Cloud Gateway and how it functions. I treasure this, by the way, I treasure that. Thank you. Okay, so mobile apps, okay, right? So, so Windows, Web, SaaS, mobile. Ah, we're not done. Okay, there's one more. And that is one of the apps that we bring down well, there's more here too, but the one we're going to show is share file, so it's data also. So we securely deliver that. So if I click on this share file app, and again, that iPad app was delivered by receiver. Now you can go and get it from the app store, but don't get it from receiver. It's delivered, secured, and managed that way. And here it goes right into my uh, share file files, and I can go in here and take a look at photos and presentations <coughs> and all of my other documents. I can upload, modify, share, send, and do the whole thing. All right? So that is the whole enchilada. Entirely on a mobile device. Okay? Okay? We got more devices. Yeah. yeah. We, we use more than just iPads. We do. 
We do. Tablets and stuff. All right, so let's go take a look at that. We've got a few more devices on the counter over here. So the first is, you know, the traditional PC. And what's interesting about the design of receiver and its functionality is the fact that uh, a lot of what you'll see now on the PC and the Mac, the design is driven by the work that we've done on the portable device, on the mobile devices. So you can pull an iPad out and you can design and it makes perfect sense and then you can translate that directly over here. It should look the same. So we come over to the HP Spectre here and open up receiver and of course it does. We've got, you know, the applications that we, uh, we're looking at. In fact, I can even go in here and refresh and those two additional apps that I pulled a while ago will drop up in here too. And it'll pull that spreadsheet over too as it smooth rooms it over to us. So the whole section is pulled over. Now, all the applications, because we're in window, are of course made available to us in the start menu. So we can find them all here, integrated in. And all of the files are integrated into the file manager, right? Windows Explorer here, so we can see all that as well. If we come into here and click that same spreadsheet, you know it's going to launch the same. We're going to have access to data, applications, single sign-on SaaS applications, all much the same. In fact, what we're going to do is open up that same file in here and just lay this out, okay? So here we are working away. Now, one other thing I want to show you here is if I click on Outlook, so Outlook, again running in Zen app, is going to be presented here on this machine. And one thing I want to show you is the, uh, the plugin for ShareFile. So how we do data management within here. I come into here to create a new email, and because my ShareFile account is integrated in, I can uh, pop into my new email right here, and I can say, you know, when I send this, I want to send a file to you that's from ShareFile. So it's integrated. It's going to go into ShareFile, look into my account, find my directories, and I can pop in through them, and maybe I want to send a presentation to you, like the keynote presentation, hit OK, and it just puts a link together, sends the link off to you. So it's that easy, and you're not filling up your Exchange server. I can also send a file right off my hard drive, so I can just grab it and toss it in. It does the same. It uploads it into ShareFile and sends the link. And the last thing I'll show here is request a file. But if you don't have ShareFile, someone doesn't have it, you need them to send you a file that's massive, you send them a link. They click, it uploads into your share file, and away you go. Okay? That's Windows. So now we go home. Now, the beautiful part about this is whenever we travel between home, here and there, work, and so forth, we don't have to carry anything. Because we have a device at work, and we have a device at home. And we know all of our apps and our data and our SaaS and everything is available to us. So we can come into here and uh, click on that spreadsheet that you saw a minute ago, and it'll smooth roam it and bring it home to us. Right? And there is Outlook as well as the spreadsheet. Okay? So we also have the ability to pull in SaaS applications. So if all I was at home, I wanted to hit uh, salesforce.com and launch that, the way it goes. So here I am on the Mac, doing the same, right? Click and go. Single sign-on from home through the cloud gateway, all this value ain't coming out of there. Okay? So that's wonderful. Now we move on beyond home, and we go to the store. Now the store, as of next Friday, when you buy a PC, it will come with Windows 8. So ready or not, here it comes, right? So in here, just a quick glimpse into Windows 8, we've got it set up with Receiver. So Receiver with a new tile interface. And we can come into here and log in, and we'll again connect back to the same cloud gateway and have access to those same applications. I can also pop into here and open up ShareFile, go to Meeting, all these applications available in the Windows 8 look and feel. Okay, as you can see right here, and ready to go, much the same as the rest. And the last part is going into the store to see products that don't exist yet. So this is an example of an HP Envy X2 device, and it'll be available in stores probably December or January timeframe, but far be it from me to provide dates and product offerings, right? Of course. Now what's interesting about this is that this whole new world of, you know, a Windows 8 and touch, like you use your iPad for a while, you come back to your laptop and you start touching the screen up here. It doesn't work, right? Well, it does here, okay? So this is touch up here. So this is a device that has a keyboard integrated into a touch screen, as you can see right there, and I can pop into here and interact with that. And by the way, if I want this device to just be a tablet, I can just rip the screen off and go off of the tablet too. So imagine this new world, the integrated world of the tile and the regular desktop interface, the device transforms to one to another and all the sort of devices that are coming next year, all the BYO that's coming at you. You just can't do it without a receiver in Cloud Gateway. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. You know, the, the velocity around and 
consumerization of food. And, you know, if you think about a new iPhone, new devices from Google, new devices from Amazon, and this huge wave we're going to start seeing from the Microsoft Windows 8 launch with really innovative form factors like you saw there in that HP device. The pressure on IT to move to a BYO model, to move to solutions for mobile work styles is going to be in just incredible. When we started talking about BYO about three years ago, everyone thought we were crazy, okay? That we'd never get to a business model. Business would never allow and encourage people to bring their own devices. At this point, you know, we see customers tipping over, and that's what's driving the enterprise mobility management marketplace and the need for a mobile work style solution. And as you look at this, you know, it's, it's actually a world that is perfect for us because it's driving the heterogeneity that kinds of issues that we've solved over and over and over again across many years. So looking back on computing, it's all centered around Windows. And a ton of business computing today is still centered around Windows. But looking forward, it's about Windows and Android and HTML5 and iOS, right? And these operating systems defining apps and experiences are what IT organizations are going to have to support. And so the reason we have this badge, you know, around enterprise mobility that has these four little dots is because of this, right? And how it fits into our portfolio and becomes a huge priority going forward so that we can continue to be the company that customers turn to for solutions that allow people to work anywhere and allow IT services to be made anywhere. And this is what we're going to talk about on Wednesday in the keynote. We're going to talk about collaboration and how it's going social, going mobile, and going contextual. We're going to talk about mobile and you know, a lot of what we just talked about and a little more. Uh, and we're going to talk about cloud, about building and delivering services from a cloud infrastructure. So this is what we're doing to lead to opportunity for us together so that we can be in the boat together pulling to where the opportunity is for growth and revenue and profitability. And in my mind, continuing to practice the core principles of partnering that has brought Citrix here, you know, in our relationship with you and many, many other partners around the world. And when I think there are five principles of partnering that have been, I think, ever present at Citrix, certainly the 17 years I've been privileged to be part of this team. First is a culture of caring. We see partners as an extension of Citrix. That's why Al talked about family. Secondly, is a principle of mutual respect and trust. We both ask and deliver. We ask and deliver, you ask and deliver, okay? And it's both ways. Third is this whole idea of anyness and the strength of anyness, not only in the kinds of solutions that we provide, but the strength of anyness when we have an ecosystem of strategic partners. Whether they're facing the customer with solutions or they're partners, strategic partners in the industry that are part of our overall ecosystem. There's strength in that. Fourth is continuous improvement. We always want to be better because we don't think we're perfect. Okay? Um, so as Tom said, we aspire to be your best partner in your best business. And fifth is what I just talked about, and that is our obligation to lead to where the opportunity is, to see the future and pursue it courageously. So that's what we see in the future, and we're excited. We're excited about the products, solutions, programs, and other strategic partnerships that we're bringing to you to 
support growth, to take us to infinity and beyond, and to make sure that we keep doing the right things together so that Citrix can be greater than the sum of these parts for customers, for you and us working together. So thanks very, very much. Really appreciate your coming to Summit and enjoy the rest of the conference and I'll see you on Wednesday morning at the keynote. Thank you.